Hello, I'm Karen and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you how to make the little hat. Um, I'm going to be making a bigger one to fit onto Mummy Bear. Um, I'm going to be making her one out of um, this lovely red. I'm still using my 6mm hook and this is still the chunky, um, the chunky yarn. Okay, <clears throat> and while I'm actually doing this video I'm actually be going to be sharing the history and the importance of Miss Lambert. So I've put a slip knot on my hook and we're going to begin with a chain of 12. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12. Now that's my first stitch into the second stitch underneath one loop of the chain we're going to single crochet all the way back down so we actually end up with a total of 11 stitches so that's two three four five six seven <clears throat> eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Okay, and then what we do is we chain one and we turn. <clears throat> now we're going to just work in the back loop. So the back loops are the loops that are facing away from me. The front loops are the loops that are towards me. I'm just going to work single crochet if you're in the US or a double crochet if you're in the UK and we're just going to literally work this back this same stitch all the way back backwards and forwards so we're always going to be working into the back loops of every row which will form the pattern that's generally known today as the ribbing pattern um, ribbing R-I-B-B-I-N-G um, but when Miss Lambert wrote about it in her book, she actually called it the stretchy stitch. <laughs> so, um, and this can be used um, if you want to make one for a lack for an adult size, then you just need to make yourself a longer chain. And the way to measure your head, um, you don't measure from the top of your head down to your eyes. You actually measure from the the crown of your head, which is, do you know when you're born and you something you get this swirl at the back of your head? So actually measure from there, <clears throat> that way round, yes, yeah, so that we've got the correct length. I've done mine longer so I can have a turn up, okay? Just thought I'd share that little bit of information. At the end of each, each and every single row we do a chain one and we turn and we just keep working in the back loops of the stitches all the time. That's all there is to this pattern. So if, um, and it needs to be 25 um, rows long to fit our bear or the snowman depending if, you, if you're making the snowman and you're doing the hat for um, the snowman then um, it's still the same size hat it's just <coughs> excuse me and then look we have a little bear watching in the corner <laughs> yellow bear um, anyway sorry I'm messing about yeah, so you just keep literally working this and do 25 rows. Um, so if you, <clears throat> if that's all you want to know, and then you can leave this. But if you want to know about the relevance of Miss Lambert and the um, history um, of crochet and actually general history, this is not just um, to do with crochet. Because as I've discovered, as I've been doing my research, there's a lot more involved than I ever imagined it would be and I absolutely love the fact that it's so involved <laughs> I love the fact that there's all these different secrets and there's all these different things that I need to trace and to check up and to just to you know it's it's with with every single bit of history that was ever written the person that wrote the history could only ever write about what they knew at that time so in the 1800s, um, England had only just um, been discovering about 
um, dinosaurs and fossils and was trying to date them. And so we've got our scientists all working on things like that. Um, whereas um, where the actual fossils that they was finding were being found um, in um, Africa and places like that, those people already knew that those bones was there. They didn't think that they was unusual. They just accepted them as being, it's a bit like part of the furniture, you know. It's like, oh, yeah, that bone's been there for years. Yeah, don't do anything, just change, no, don't change, just stays the same. Um, but to us, um, we was obviously a lot more curious and wanted to know what the bones were. So when it comes to um, the crochet history, and um, according to the history, Mademoiselle Rigo, you know, from the, what you get on the internet, Mademoiselle Rigo is supposed to be the inventor of crochet. But then as you start to look back, because um, her work was written in 1846, um, and everybody that's followed my work knows that I had to go and find the Penelope magazine, which was a Dutch magazine written in the 1820s. Um, so um, I did. <laughs> But also, see, because I, I probably did the same as what everybody else did, is did a jump. Did a jump from 1846 back to 1823 is what I was searching for. But um, there is, say, there's Miss Lambert. Miss Lambert wrote her work in 1842. And her book is um, a handbook of needlecraft, which was actually published say, in 1842 in America. And so um, we have to then start to have a look. It's like, hang on a minute. I, you know, it's like everything so far is showing me that, that all the crochet was in Ireland. So how come it's all of a sudden in America? How did it get there? But then when I look even further, I find that in 1840, there was a Miss Gauguin, um, or sorry, Mrs. Gauguin, um, and she was in Scotland when she published her book. And her book was on knitting, netting and tatting, I believe. So, but the interesting thing is, is that both of the books um, and other books that are found as well that are to do with knitting and netting and tatting actually have crochet in them. And um, and this is this is one of the patterns that say Miss Lambert's got it in her book well before uh, Mamsel Rigo's work um, but also Miss Lambert she um, I've split my yarn I'm going to come back Miss Lambert also has um, references in her book to do with um, the where is the best place to go and get your wool from? Which country provides you with which wool? Which country you can get your cotton from? And she mentions um, the Goblin Factory, which I've already mentioned in my history work before, because I've linked Mademoiselle Rigo to the Goblin Factory in France, which um, was where our, the, the Flanders tapestry makers were making tapestry. Originally, the Goblin factory was a dyer's factory, um, but essentially it was still a place where they made things for the royals. So it was a secret place for um, the commoner wasn't allowed to know what was going off in there. They didn't want them to know the secret of how they made their wool turned red or green or purple or whatever colour they was doing at that time. And um, not only that, she mentions... Um, Mr. Spencer in in the contents it's, she's put Mr. Spencer talks tapestry but then there's a poem by a Mr. Spencer which is not the same Mr. Spencer that I was looking at um, <clears throat> she also talks about using the copper plate and how they produced prints on the copper plate which look like hieroglyphs which they then used to print the images in the books, because in those days they hadn't got um, a camera to take photographs and, and publish it that way around. It was each individual picture was hand engraved into a piece of copper, and then the ink was then put on the copper to print onto into the book. So um, we've got all of those sorts of things in there, and she also mentions um, Penelope. 
and Ulysses. Now, <clears throat> if you don't know the story of Penelope and Ulysses, um, that is all to do with the Trojan War, and it's supposed to be um, a mythical legend. So, but because she mentions Penelope, and I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And she also mentions the fact that under no circumstances was wire ever used to crochet. <clears throat> really made me think because while I was translating the Penelope magazine, um, it actually, instead of translating into a thread or a yarn, it actually translated into wire. And so um, I just, you know, little things they make you think. But also in the Penelope magazine, she, the author also mentions um, Penelope and Ulysses. And so I was curious because I've got to think, you know, crochet had been kept a secret and there's all these little references here, there, everywhere that are hinting that something's going off. Such as Mademoiselle Rigo's last book that, she, that I can find a copy of was in 1877. And there is a picture of Napoleon on a coin um, facing towards another coin, which has got the um, faces of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert on. But then they've got the date done as 1802. And I thought, well, if the book was printed in 1877, why has it got the date of 1802 on the front of it with Napoleon? And this, I believe, is when... Um, the actual original argument, I suppose, um, arose because the, as I began to research Penelope, I actually found an earlier copy in 1821. And in 1821, there's a list of all these names, which I always thought would be the people who wrote the patterns or whatever inside Penelope. Um, but they weren't. There was actually a list of a members of association of a, um, that had started in 1821 to protect the copyright of people's work. <clears throat> so, um, but none of them claimed to be the inventor of any of the things inside Penelope. And Penelope is essentially, um, it's a bit like an encyclopedia, I suppose. But of all sorts of different arts and crafts with knitting, netting, actually not knitting, sorry, netting, crochet, um, um, embroidery, paper making flowers, um, enamelling and all those sorts of things. So um, it's basically like an, an art and craft book really at the end of the day. So it made me think um, and say as, as I looked at different things I looked at other people's work and I started to notice that there was in the very very beginning they were struggling really struggling on how to actually describe how to crochet um, and what you were supposed to do and all those sorts of things and then as the time by the time you get to 1846 they're actually settled down and we've got patterns which were very similar to what we've got today and um, I'm just going to check on my notes because I've got to make sure I tell you everything. we have done Miss Lambert and the 1821 bit. Oh, that was it. Um, yes, the, when they was writing these books at this particular time, we still haven't got education. There's not um, a formal f f source of education for as commoners in England. It's still... The writing was meant for all of the the royals and um, for the church and for the extremely rich who were normally related to the royals. So um, it wasn't I say it wasn't really essentially in the beginning designed for us. But then there's also that thing of like with all where I've been doing my research I've been finding that there's so many secrets and there's like hidden messages inside all sorts of different pieces of work so to be able to um put things into context properly and understand that in the, in 1823 
an authoress, whoever she may be, which I still believe it was Mademoiselle Rigo, um, she's written, um, she's trying to explain on how to, how to crochet. And you can tell that she is trying to, but unfortunately the translation is awful and it says that you need to be stabbing into things and using the, the wire, which is they're all incorrect. Obviously, we know that now. But then, and that's in 1823. But then by 1833, um, the Penelope magazine, when I translated that, essentially says, forget everything that I've told you to do about crochet. Here's how to do it. And it is explained so much easier. And um, I suppose as long as you do know how to crochet, you would be able to crochet from the 1831, um, the 1830s magazine. But honestly, you wouldn't be able to learn how to crochet from the 1820s um, magazine. Okay, I'm just going to just check my rows. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Um, we need to have a total of 25. So I was just checking where I am. Um, yeah, so... We've established that from the 1820s and to the 1840s that um, the actual writing of crochet eventually becomes a settled way of writing patterns. But they still use words such as ground, which is for a background because you're going to be using two strands of, of crochet to crochet with. And they use the word receipts. Um, which is the English archaic word for a recipe and they're not actually using the word pattern and I think that was where the argument came across with um, Germany because Germany actually um, is I think if I'm right <laughs> let me just show you I'm just going to get a label I mean this one hasn't got one but on the inside of your label um, that's where um, in Berlin they actually started to use the inside of the labels to be able to write patterns on um, and they actually called them pattern so that it was their thing so um, so it's all all of these things are all to do with with the copyright the ownership of who whose work belongs to who but at the end of the day all of the authors that wrote books that have got knitting netting tatting crochet in them in the 1800s not one of them say that they actually invented crochet. So um, then because of say, the, the way that the writing was changing, I've actually done um, a lot of research on actual writing itself so that we can put things into better perspective. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So... If we go back to the 40, it's 1455 is um, the first time that a book is printed by a printing machine and it is the Gutenberg Bible and it was written in Latin. And then the first English person to write a book was William Claxton or was it William yeah Claxton I'm sure his name was Claxton um, and his book was the history of Troy uh, which was work that he translated from Greek so um, I found it all very fascinating to think well it's okay then so that, that um, obviously at that time we've only got kings and queens and the people from the church um, whether they be monks or whether they're nuns or priests or whatever that are reading and writing and obviously the rich um, relatives of the royals so to be able to really really say what you want to say about history you've got to then look even further back and look back into writing so I'm just going to count my row again and then Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two. Yeah, so um, I actually have researched writing um, all the way back to the ancient Sanskrit writing, which, by the way, 
Um, the Sanskrit writing was, I was always led to believe, was the writing that was um, cuneiform writing that was in the beginning of people's evolution of writing in Mesopotamia. And um, there was this, there's a scientist, well, no, he's not a scientist, he was supposed to be an archaeologist, um, Zachariah Sitchin. And um, he he wrote some books in the um, 70s all about the fact that, like, saying, oh, this, this is all to do with the, that we came from aliens and everything else. And, um, but I was led to believe that it was all in Mesopotamia and in Iran and Iraq. But when I was watching the news um, and I was watching the destroying some ancient relics, I recognised one of the relics from Zachariah Sitchin's videos and it was actually in um, a pillow. And a pillow is in Syria, which is um, like the other side of a continent <laughs> away uh, from where I believed the actual original work was from 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, it's my 25. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fold over our work, um, do a chain one first. I'm going to slip stitch through the front of my work and then slip stitch underneath both loops of the um, chain stitch at the on the other side. Yeah, so um, I've had to look at all these old archaeologists' work, and I say Zachariah Sitchin is on all about aliens and everything else, and which leads us on to um, all sorts of topics. But I have I've had to read everything. I've read all about the aliens. I've read all about the um, people with Reese's negative blood group because that's what I am as well, actually. Um, to try and so and they're all saying all these different things and i'm actually going to be able to explain to you um where i think that they've gone wrong and actually how and why um we've got the the writing that we actually do um and so i'm going to be writing all of this sort of stuff in my blog so that you could so that just i want i want today's archaeologists and the dna um specialists to really to like to relook at things and look at things that they've actually got in storage because there's I mean there's lots of things I say like this stuff from Zachariah Sitchin that people have been believing for years and years because because we've been told it then we essentially believe it to be true and it's not always necessarily the case. You need to just so weave in and out of these now. I like to go under this part so it just makes it easier to stitch. Um, yeah, so because, I say, Miss Lambert, she's really vital of, like, showing me that, like, okay, this, this, this links a lot further back. She mentions going back further than um, King Henry VIII. And so King Henry VIII was in the 1500s. And so it is quite possible that crochet was actually... Um, written down in um, another language and then it was translated so that mean, means effectively that Mademoiselle Rigo discovered it rather than invented it and so um, I'm going to show and share all of my things um, I'm in my blog because obviously I've been saying to you I'm going to be um, I'm going to be off recuperating from dental surgery which always goes wrong because of my blood group um, and I suffer from all sorts of silly little things that you shouldn't necessarily suffer from but um, because I know that that happens and I know that that's normal for me I just have to make sure that I just look after myself really really well um, and Obviously, all my family know, my children know. So, I'm doing all of these videos now, sharing some little snippets so that you can go to my blog, and then you can and you'll be able to read everything. Um, as I speak now, while I'm doing this, the blog ha actually hasn't been written. It's all been handwritten, ready. I've just got to literally go and type it all up. 
but I wanted to make sure that I've got the videos done so that I can match everything up so that I can link you together and share all these things because I say is I've discovered so many different things where people are saying one thing but then I don't know just like the like the map the map of the world of like the temperature of what it used to be like years ago doesn't fit in with the stories that you know so that's why I think that they made the pyramids in the ice age actually and not um not the dates that they've actually said that they are so I'm just finishing this bit off just do a little stitch in the top just so I can just tie my work up cut that off there yeah so um thanks to Miss Lambert and all of her information and all of her information about Penelope and the little bits that I've been translating of Penelope because I have to admit it's um it's really really time consuming for me to translate Dutch into English especially when um we're thinking it's this is archaic English language that they, that's um it's not necessarily today's modern language so um I've got to take all of those things into consideration while I'm actually doing my work and also I'm doing it all with a very open mind and not necessarily believing everything to be completely 100% true um, so I'm just put that to one side turn this inside out or the right way around and there you go there you've got your little hat for your beer <laughs> You can have it like that or you can do a turn up on it if you want to. I don't tend to have it turned up because the ears, um, you can. You can roll it up if you want to. So it, it looks a bit more. Uh, it fits better on the snowman with it rolled up than it does on the bear. There you go. It looks a bit like Paddington Bear now. <laughs> I never intended that. It's just that for the sake of the video, I actually had white. And I was like, oh, I've got a white background, so I couldn't use white. So I used the red instead. But there you go. There's the little hat. Um, yeah, so um, for those of you that are, that are interested in finding out about the history and everything and wanting to... No, we have to. I want to know the truth and the answer to this. I'm not going to give in until I can say 100%. Um, but so far, I'm definitely going to go with the Mademoiselle Rigo discovering crochet rather than inventing it. Um, and maybe she invented the doily, as in a crochet doily, rather than because um, the, the doily is a doily. But. Um, Yes, so all of my little snippets of information of all these little sections that I've done, whether it to be whether it's with the Bible, whether it's Stone Age man, whether it's Egyptians, I'm going to write um, in my blog, which is um, on blogger.com. It's the same as my name as my channel because I just use my own name because, well, I don't need to use anything fancy. Um, I'm me, and that's it. <laughs> I am what I am. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so. I'm going to put all of that in my in my blog and then um, you can make up your own mind at the end of the day. It's just that I myself, I feel that um, because I'm looking at things in a different perspective, I'm looking more open mindedly. I'm using today's um, information, you know, such as the DNA and, and like like my fossils. I, I mean, I've got my bone fossil. I've got my flint fossil. Um, I love this one. It's just got such a good don't know it's like you could imagine it fits it fits either way actually but you can imagine um you know uh, the my ancient ancestors holding this and being able to work with it um i've got my i've got my little heart as well look this that so this one just shows ancient creatures that used to live inside a stone and i have this one which is i don't know if you can see the indent in there of a like that's also a trace fossil kind of thing so I'm really, really, I'm not just like some airhead saying, oh, I think this, this and this. And because I know that the conspiracy theorist people are going to go, oh, but, 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 well, but, but, but back 
look at things for what they are and have a reality check. Yes, okay, Zachariah Sitchin did write about the aliens and he did say that he could read Sanskrit. However, he may have misread some of it and he may have got some of his calculations a little bit wrong. I mean, look at this. We um, now know, rather than it being in Mesopotamia and Iran and Iraq where he was trying to claim he was, he was actually in Apollo which is in Syria. Oh, talking of Syria, by the way, just so that Syria gets a really good plug because I like this one. Um, I found out that, because um, I was doing the textile stuff, um, you know, the, they used a plant called flax, um, a flax seed. You've probably heard of it in like herbal remedies and stuff to eat, but actually they used it to make linen with as well from the plant. And um, it's thanks to the Syrian people that it made, that they um cultivate it so that they actually made a bigger seed so they could have bigger plants to get more stuff from it so there you go another little bit of information so i hope you've liked making these um well say i've liked my videos and that you're making all these little bears and things and your little snowman and i just want to say you know thanks ever such a lot i appreciate it i know i've got well over three million total views i'm approaching my twenty four thousand subscribers so um and there's so many comments there's just lovely lovely things that you say you know and i really i do keep reading them but i just i like i said i've been poorly and i'm going to be off as well i'm having some more surgery on my teeth and because i react funny um i'm going to do a thing as well i'm going to do a special write-up all about the rhesus negative blood group because i am sick of it i'm sorry there's all these stories saying rhesus negative this 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 well i know the truth because i am one and I think that makes a big difference. So thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. And I hope you've had lots and lots of fun. Okay. So bye for now.